Could just tell you a little bit about who I am and, and what we do. So my name is Neil Belanger and I'm the executive director of the British Columbia Aboriginal Network on Disability Society. And we're based out of uh, British Columbia in Victoria. Um, I'm a member of the Gitsan First Nation in the Laxale clan, which is a uh, Northwestern uh, First Nations community in BC. Um, we're a little bit different, uh, whereas the programs and services that we provide uh, are primarily accessed by individuals who uh, are on PWD, persons with disability assistance, and probably 98% of them live uh, in poverty. We maintain about 6,000 active uh, files per year. Um, and we provide support services in relation to employment, housing, uh, accessing healthcare services, transportation, and the whole spectrum. Anything that's uh, disability related for indigenous persons with disabilities in our province, uh, we're the go-to organization. So. When I was asked to be on this panel to be a visionary or a forward thinker, I, I don't really know if I am in that regard um, as it relates to employment. What I do know is that disability is expensive. It's expensive for the person who lives with a disability, it's expensive for the government, uh, it's expensive for the community. And we've got to realize that, we've got to move forward, and we've got to put that aside because it always seems that the funding is the issue that restricts many of our clients, many of the people that we deal with, and that relates into accessing necessary programs to help enable you to become employed. And those are health services, it's transportation, it's housing. Um, I've heard that 50% uh, of persons who live with a disability are employed. That's certainly not the case in our sector. Uh, we have approximately 115,000 people in BC that access PWD benefits, persons with disability benefits, and one in five uh, are reporting income. So one in five. We live in one of the most expensive provinces in Canada. Uh, the PWD rate is 1133. These people are not living on that rate because they want to. It's because the systems are not in place to help them move into employment and to be, uh, you know, to reach their potential in our communities. And that's what we have to address. So if I talk about being a visionary and wanting to do things, we've got to get away from the money. We've got to get away from these, these time uh, limited programs. Uh, disability is not a project. It's, it's, it's who we are as a community. It's who we are as Canadians. Um, I often hear stories of people overcoming adversity and, and going, you know, against all odds to, you know, get employed and be, you know, contributing members of our communities. Well, that's not right. We live in Canada. We shouldn't have to overcome adversity every day to be part of our communities. We need to put the structures in place. <laughs> We need to put the structures in place and we have to fund them and we have to fund them on an ongoing basis. We, know we, we have the uh, Enabling Accessibility Fund and that's a great fund, it's, it is a great fund, but it's time limited and, and you know, there are going to be employers that may need some support after June 30th after the, the project has closed. We've got to look at those things. We've got to look at our sector We've got to look at the, who we are, and we've got to come together as well. We have to respect everybody's mandate because we're very diverse, um, but we have to bring other people as well. Everyone in this room here is an advocate or a service pro provider. We work within the disability sector. We, we know, I mean, we're talking to what we already know. We need to bring in the people that don't know. We need to bring in the mayors of Ottawa and Toronto and Vancouver, and we've got to ask them, what is the difficulty? We need to bring in industry and say, what is the difficulty? We think we understand, but you tell us and we'll provide you the solutions and we'll show you the way that this can happen. Um, we gotta take those steps. You know, we are, we are the only standalone indigenous organization in Canada of our type. Um, we need the AFN here. We need the Métis Nation, we need the Inuit, we need Assets, uh, which is um, an Indigenous uh, employment program based out of Ottawa. They need to be part of the consultation and the conversations that we have if we're going to develop a national strategy. The Indigenous um, disability rate is twice that of the national population. Um, and, and, and as everybody knows, living with a disability is very difficult. Uh, and um, if you're Indigenous and you live with a disability, it's much more difficult. Um, I don't know who was here on Friday when the uh, 
the young lady gave the prayer and the welcoming. And she spoke about a community member who, who had passed away uh, because she was lit on fire. Her legs, they, they, they started her on fire and her legs, and she's passed away. Um, that's the reality for many uh, Indigenous people living with disability and just Indigenous people in general in Canada. Canada is not a very welcoming place for Indigenous people, regardless of how we think we may be moving forward. Uh, we're not, and we need to be, be a better job. And we do that through partnerships. We do that through being curious about the Indigenous sector, about the Indigenous disability sector, and creating those partnerships. I often see that there's a fear in approaching communities. We don't know how, so we're not going to. Uh, they should come to us first. But when you're not welcomed you know, in your own community or your own province, it's hard to actually extend those hands. So we need to take a better step from our sector, and we need you to take a better step from your sector. Uh, we're all in here together. We don't want you to speak for us. We want you to stand with us, and we'll do the same with you. Um, and that's how we're gonna progress, and that's how we're gonna move forward. So, I'll always come back to the financial aspect because I see that to be the biggest barrier. We need to, you know, develop some strategies with the government, and there's good people in government, and we need good people in government. There's some people that, yeah, aren't so interested, but there's really good people, and and that's what we need. And we need people that are going to go on there with the insight that that uh, that we have within our sector, disability sector, indigenous sector, and who want to make positive change. Because you know what, policies can be broken, policies can be rewritten, they can be flexed to the to to the breaking point. We work with provincial, federal governments um, across Canada in British Columbia, and we are very fortunate where we are to have an exceptional team provincially and federally that we work with. And we say, listen, we ask the questions. We don't, we don't say, we don't dwell too much about why, why they can't do it. We say, you know, we're gonna do this. You tell us why we're not gonna do this. And nine times out of 10, we're actually very successful. We've been able to stretch those things and move forward. And we've gotta take chances and we've gotta think, you know, outside the traditional way of thinking about why we can't do something. They say, you know, we are gonna do something. We're gonna move forward here. We have the accessibility legislation coming up federal accessibility legislation, it has the potential to be great change for our community, for the indigenous communities. Do I think it's gonna be a groundbreaking thing and that all the ills of the world are gonna be solved? No, I don't. It's a, it comes down to money again. To bring communities up just for the, for the, uh, the physical accessibility, would be billions of dollars. There's 623 First Nations in Canada uh, and probably 80% of them have significant uh, accessibility uh, infrastructure problems. So is the government going to fund that? No, they're not going to fund that. And, and, and should they fund it? Yeah, they should have some, done something before, but we have to look forward in making sure that anything that's built in the environment is going to be, be built in an accessibility lens, a disability lens, so that people can work in their communities, they're not in their house, so, so that they can be part of the community and contribute that if you live with a disability. We need to take a look at government policies. Even today, um, and, and I have no idea why this is, but if you look at um, the CRA policy where it pertains to First Nations communities, there's actually a clause in there where you can opt out of paying CPP if you're the band. You can actually opt out of paying CPP. And, and so what does that mean for a person who becomes disabled at work if they're not paying into it or if they're unaware that there's actually another component that they could pay the employer and the employee part? Many communities, um, uh, haven't taken advantage of, but there are still several that do not pay into CPP. And I don't understand why a policy like that would be in place and why information isn't shared to, to the workers uh, because all of a sudden you don't have a pension and if you get hurt, you don't have any benefits. I mean, it just doesn't make sense, these policies that are in place. And there's much more like that. The Prime Minister has created a, a committee of ministers to review INAC policies. INAC has been split into two different uh, sections now. We think that Minister Harris should be part of that committee. He's not. We think he should be there to bring a disability lens to it and ensure that whatever policies are taken federally uh, within First Nations Communities of Canada, that the disability lens is applied first. And we believe that should be applicable provincially and municipally as well, because we are the ands. It's, we're gonna do this and the disabled and the indigenous. We need to be the first for a change. We need to be the ones that are leading the way and say, look it, Whatever you do, you design it with disability in mind, and then we'll talk to 
you know, those groups that are not disabled, you know, and let them get their input after we give ours because we need to be the first for a change. We need to change the thinking. Five minutes. How much do you want to pay for the five minutes? Anybody? <laughs> so I can go on and, and talk about a bunch of other things here, but uh, uh, I just want to take the time as well to, to thank Maureen um, uh, for inviting me here today. Uh, and I would invite any of you to, to contact our office or get a hold of me. We're always looking for partners. Uh, we, we don't put up, we, for, for many years, we worked in a silo. We were content with the fact that we were the only standalone Indigenous organization in Canada, and we did very little good work. We've changed that, and we do a lot of good work now. Um, and we don't do that alone, we do it with our partners, many of who are in the room today. Um, and if I can say one thing, uh, when I talk about partnership, and I talk about sincere, sincerity and, and moving forward, does everybody know Steve Esteem here? Who knows? So I think, I think one of the things that we should create is a, a hashtag be a Steve because, uh, you know, Steve, for us, uh, our relationship is a few years old, but he's always been there. Uh, he's always been uh, looking out for all people and all organizations living and dealing with a disability. And I think that if we're going to move forward, we have to take Steve's attitude. He's not in your face. He's here to help. He wants to help. And uh, we need more people like Steve. Be a Steve. Thanks.